What's up, everybody, and happy Tuesday, December the 8th. I wanted to provide you with another economic stimulus update for today, give you some information, two data points that I think that are important in pointing to the need for more economic stimulus, even in the light of having the first vaccine disseminated to the first recipient in the United Kingdom yesterday, which is very, very good news. So we are moving in the right direction, but are we there yet? Please stay tuned. I'm gonna give you my idea and my thought process on the next economic stimulus and why I think we still need more stimulus. And I want you to weigh in too. Provide me with your update, leave a comment below and let me know if we still need more economic stimulus or is the economy perfectly fine right now? Stay tuned. What's up, everybody? My name is Paul Zachary Shelton Jr. and I'm the Chief Investment Officer of Warwick Shore Advisors. We are a wealth and investment management firm located in Orlando, Florida with clients all across the United States. If this is your first time coming to my channel or seeing one of my videos, I ask that you please hit the subscribe button. Please ring the bell so that you can get an update each time I post a new video. And lastly, please like and share this video to help me increase the financial literacy of our globe. So there's two things that I wanna to speak to you about today regarding the economic stimulus, and it's pretty much giving you two data points around the economic stimulus, and it's coming from Vox.com, V-O-X.com. So this is a website that I look at sometimes, and I get updates from, and it provided some economic insight as to what the true health and true nature of our economy looks like as of right now. So we all know from my video on Friday, the unemployment rate is down to 6.7% right now, which is a good thing. It's not as high as it was at the onset of this pandemic. But the biggest factors and one of the largest contributors to the low unemployment rate right now is the fact that so many people had left the employment market or left the labor market. And at an alarming rate, a lot of women are leaving the employment sector and choosing to stay home and choosing not to be employed for whatever reason. A lot of times it is because of health care or child care, I should say. You can't go to work if you have children at home in certain situations, and I completely understand that. So that's created a significant strain on our economy, and it has reduced the denominator in the labor force participation rate, which has made the unemployment rate look much greater than it typically is. If we were to go back to 2007 and compare then and now, and if we were to use the same amount of participants, the people in the workforce in 2007 versus now, and the amount of unemployment we would have, the unemployment rate would literally be right around 125 to 13%, not 6.7%. So even though we have a much better unemployment number, it is not true and indicative of the actual nature and the fundamentals of our economy as it stands right now. Yes, the stock market is doing good. Yes, people are making a lot of money on the stock market. A lot of that is predicated on my next point. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is why the economy has done so well. So far this year, I should say, to finish off 2020. So the economic stimulus that we received in March, all the stimulus payments that were sent out, all the aid that was given to businesses and things of that nature provided a runway for all of the growth and all of the gains that we have seen so far in our economy up till now. As of 1231, 2020, we all know that all of that is going to dissipate and disappear just as quickly as Cinderella's dreams did on that fateful night. But will there be a glass slipper, slipper, I should say, that will come back and help our economy in January? We don't know. It's very possible that that glass slipper could be more economic stimulus, but something needs to be done before 1231 or else many people will fall into foreclosure. Many people will be evicted from their jobs are evicted from their homes, I should say, as a result of not having the jobs to be able to pay their rent. So there is a lot that still needs to be done. I want to provide you with some data right here that is from analysis of the Congressional Budget Office. And I'm going to read this off to you. And it says that each dollar of spending given to corporations generates about 40 cents in extra income and extra economic activity in our economy. 
So every dollar that's given to a corporation, let's say every dollar um, of economic growth or every dollar of stimulus that is given to a corporation generates about 40 cents of economic activity in the economy. Every dollar that's given to a high wage earners generates about 60 cents of economic activity in our economy. So that's a good thing. But you can see from those those um, amounts of economic activity generated in our economy that there's a significant portion that is being saved by each one of those groups and regenerated back into their own company or regenerated back into their own savings and retirement plans for those individuals. However, for the rest of everyone else, if you're not a high income earner, if you're not a corporation, each dollar of gain that you receive generates about $2.10 of economic activity. So that means that whenever you disseminate economic stimulus, whenever you give $1 to an individual that goes out and spends and doesn't save, it generates a multiplicity effect on the U.S. economy and on the global economy for that matter. So $1 of economic growth, $1 of economic stimulus generates about $2.10 of growth in our economy. That's the effect that we saw happen over the summer as a result of the CARES Act. Now we're at a point where the money that was received from the CARES Act, the individual you know, stimulus payments, all of that has pretty much disseminated and all that has been digested by our economy. There is still more that needs to be done. There is still a need right now. There are still several million people that are unemployed and several million people that are either underemployed or have left the labor force by force. They left the participation rate by force because they had a necessity to do so. This is not good for our overall economy. This is not good for the stance of where we are pushing forward. It is very possible that we will still see economic growth and economic gains in the stock market, but we could continue to see everyone else that is not able to participate in the stock market to lose and further fall into poverty. So that will only widen the wealth gap in this country and exhibit any future issues that we would have to have to satisfy that. Please leave your comments below. Give me your feedback on all this data. Give me your feedback on what is the best way we should move forward with generating economic growth in our economy. If it's not going to be through an economic stimulus, how do we do it? Trickle down economics doesn't work. As we can see, you give $1 to a corporation, only 40 cents gets back into the community. So leave your thoughts below. If this is your first time coming to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please ring the bell so you can get an update each time I post a new video. And lastly, please like and share this video to help me increase the financial literacy of our globe. Thank you so much and have a great day.